Chu Ning, a college student majoring in history, accidentally crossed the battlefield of the Battle of Tu Tu Bao and saved Zhu Qijin, the Ming Emperor Zong, on his escape, thus beginning his protagonist's life of cheating main characters. Chu Ning, Zhu Qijin Keywords of the Novel No pop dot up window for the Great Ming Emperor's Teacher, download the complete text of the Great Ming Emperor's Teacher, and read the latest chapters of the Great Ming Emperor's Teacher. Chapter 1 the Great Loyal Minister Who Saves the Car at the Beginning You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. I will punish this thief for the world. What is the situation? Skipping class to catch up on sleep, as for what? Chu Ning looked around in confusion, it didn't matter if she didn't look, and her soul flew out at a glance. The sound of shouting and killing around was deafening, with swords and guns flying and horses galloping. People waving their swords and guns were engaged in fierce combat. Shooting TV. Dreaming Chu Ning thought in confusion. Just now, the sentence, I will punish this thief for the world. So familiar. A feather arrow rubbed against Chu Ning's ear and pricked it in the grass. Chu Ning's ear was hurt by the grass leaves and he said, it's not a dream, it's time travel. Chu Ning finally confirmed the situation in front of him, and he had a feeling of wanting to die. Even if there are no beautiful women around when others travel, at least they wouldn't be like themselves, facing life.threatening situations from the beginning. As a student majoring in history, looking at the clothes of the soldiers fighting in front of me, and the sentence, I will punish this thief for the world just now, if nothing unexpected happens, now is the Ming Dynasty, a famous turning point the Tuma Fort incident. Chu Ning lowered her head to look at her attire. She was dressed in civilian attire, which was even more perfect now. Seeing her true attire, she was sure she wouldn't have any military prowess. In this chaotic battlefield, the first thing to do is to save your own life, otherwise if you are killed, there is no place to cry out for justice. Thinking of this, Chu Ning cautiously moved to the side. At this time, there were battles everywhere on the battlefield, and although the Ming army had an advantage in numbers and equipment, their morale had dispersed and they were not established at all. Although the number of Valas was not large, they were all cavalry, and they had an absolute advantage, so there was already a one-dot-sided trend on the battlefield at this time. Chu Ning carefully moved aside, not because he was not passionate enough, but because he was in his current state and what he was good at, going out had no effect except to increase the combat achievements of the war people. Just as Chu Ning moved to a small ditch, he saw a person wearing golden armor sitting upright on a stone by the river, calm and composed, not at all like a defeated army, but more like an outing. Chu Ning concluded that this was the legendary Emperor Ingzong Zhu Qijin who led the Great Ming into the abyss. As a student majoring in history, Chu Ning naturally knew about this emperor. Although being an emperor was a mess, his popularity was excellent. After being captured by Walla, he stayed in Walla for several years and not only did he not receive any grievances, but he even had his younger brother Boyan show great respect for him. Boyan even persuaded him to unconditionally send him back to the Ming dynasty, which shows the charm of Zhu Qijin's personality. At this moment, Chu Ning was a bit conflicted. Should he save him himself? Just as Chu Ning was struggling, Zhu Qijin also discovered Chu Ning. Hurry up and run for your life, Zhu Qijin waved to Chu Ning. Chu Ning gritted his teeth when he saw the situation, ignoring the danger of wealth and wealth. If it really didn't work out, he could still follow Zhu Qijin to restore. Thinking of this, Chu Ning disregarded everything and ran to Zhu Qijin's side, pulling him down into the ditch. In the surprised gaze of Zhu Qijin, Chu Ning went up and down, stripping Zhu Qijin down to only a pair of cow nose shorts. Then, he casually took off a few pieces of clothing from the nearby corpse, put them on Zhu Qijin's body, and pulled him to sneak along the river ditch. Hurry up and let go, me, shut up, it's all up to this. What do you want me to do? My life is my own, hurry up and follow me. Chu Ning couldn't help but say, pulling Zhu Qijin and crawling forward. People are like this. When there is no hope, 
they often give up all resistance. Once that impulse period is over, they will seize all the straw they think can save lives. Juchi Town is no exception. This time, he was able to resist public opinion and insisted on taking the imperial expedition, hoping to emulate his great-grandfather and conquer unruly officials. Over the years, he has been living a very miserable life, ascending to the throne at a young age, and the government has always been under the control of the Empress Dowager. Although the country has developed, it has nothing to do with him. Everyone remembers only the wisdom of the Empress Dowager and the competence of San Yang. As for him as the emperor, he is considered dispensable in everyone's eyes. As a grand emperor of the Ming dynasty, the descendant of Zhu Yuanzhang and Zhu Di, his blood flowed with infinite passion in his veins, rather than the kind of puppet who would only sit on the throne and listen to ministers controlling the court. But now all of this has dissipated with this great war. What are you thinking? Hurry up, Chu Ning urged as she looked at Zhu Qijin with a pensive expression on her face. Now Chu Ning wished he could grow wings and fly out of this land of right and wrong. It's too difficult for him and Zhu Qijin to escape from the chaotic battle of hundreds of thousands of troops. However, Chu Ning is also betting on his protagonist's halo. As a time traveler, if he just falls like this, he can only blame himself for his poor luck. If he succeeds, it will be the ultimate achievement in saving his life at the beginning. Chu Ning and Zhu Qijin crawled in the dry river ditch for about an hour before stopping. It wasn't because of any situation, but because both of them had reached their physical limits. According to the remaining memory, Chu Ning was from Datong, Shangxi. The commoners recruited by the army on the road were actually refugees who were captured. Chu Ning didn't care much about this identity, but considering that the current Ming dynasty is still strong, the registered resident system has not completely collapsed, and he has no legal identity, it can be said that it is difficult to move in the Ming dynasty. The two of them were hiding in the river ditch, panting heavily. At this moment, a loud shout came from above, calm down. Startled, the two of them trembled. Chu Ning carefully climbed up the river ditch, and a group of people and horses on the riverbank were being chased by the Vala soldiers. One of the veteran generals had their hair and beard open, trying to hold down their positions. However, the army suffered a crushing defeat, and no matter how hard the veteran tried, it was difficult to stabilize the army. Upon seeing this, Chu Ning rushed up to the riverbank without hesitation, drew out his Longquan sword, and knocked a soldier to the ground. Stop! Anyone who dares to cross this line will be killed without mercy. Chu Ning shouted loudly. The soldiers were a bit confused. There was already a dry small river not far ahead, and once they crossed it, they could continue to run forward. Unexpectedly, such a person suddenly appeared, dressed in rags, but the Longquan sword in his hand was still dripping with blood. The veteran general was also surprised at the sight. He knows that sword, which is exclusive to the emperor, but who is this person? How could the emperor's sword appear in this person's hands? Anyway, the soldier's escape was finally stopped, and he quickly stepped forward, ready to ask the truth. At this moment, Chu Ning couldn't help but pray to the heavens, hoping that the protagonist's halo could bless him through this level. He didn't want to come out, but if he didn't, the fleeing soldiers would have discovered them, and the Vala soldiers chasing the fleeing soldiers would have also discovered them. At that time, even if one has great abilities, it will be difficult for them to survive. Moreover, his current abilities, apart from his weak body, are almost non-existent. He wonders how he was caught as a commoner. But Zhu Qijin behind him was unaware of Chu Ning's complex thoughts. In his view, Chu Ning was a great loyal minister who could stand up in such a crisis, disregarding personal safety. Chapter 2 The Eight Great Vitras You are listening at NovelFull.audio under the grateful gaze of Zhu Qijin, the old general arrived near Chu Ning with the help of several guards. He was puzzled. Judging from his attire, he thought he was a commoner. How could the emperor's sword appear in his hands? Is it that the old general dare not continue to think, 
and there is no time for him to continue thinking. You, quickly gather the remaining soldiers. The enemy is still a few miles away from you. What are you running for? You are the victorious soldiers of the Ming dynasty, not a mob. Chu Ning pointed his sword at the old general and said. At this moment, the soldier who had slightly calmed down looked more obediently at Chu Ning. Dare to point a sword at Zhang Fu, the first general of the Ming dynasty, and even give orders directly to him. Apart from the emperor, they have never seen anyone do this before. Zhang Fu knew that this was not the time to dwell on these things. He calmed down and conveyed a few commands to the guards around him. Soon, under the organization of Zhang Fu's personal guards, the scattered soldiers around began to gather. Chu Ning also experienced toothaches when he saw this, and he had never seen such a big scene except on TV. The battlefield is like this, the collapse of the army is like pouring snow, uncontrollable, but once organized, soldiers can subconsciously settle down. Under Zhang Fu's organization, a team of over 3,000 people quickly appeared in front of Chu Ning. Everyone looked at Chu Ning, waiting for his command. Yes, although the organizer was Zhang Fu, the first of the Ming dynasty generals, the soldiers were more willing to believe the person in front of them at this time. You come over, Chu Ning pointed to Zhang Fu's personal guard and said. Qin Wei hesitated and looked at Zhang Fu. After seeing Zhang Fu nod, he came to Chu Ning. You each bring a hundred people and dig a pit every step in front of the riverbank, that's all. Chu Ning used his sword to dig a bowl-sized pit on the ground. The guards didn't know what this meant, but their good obedience made them choose to obey. Seeing that Chu Ning had no other orders, they turned around and led someone to dig a pit. You, arrange for someone to gather weapons and supplies, Chu Ning turned to Zhang Fu and said. At this moment, Zhang Fu was looking at Chu Ning with a surprised expression on his face. What are you still waiting for? Hurry up and go, Chu Ning said anxiously. Zhang Fu seemed to have received some kind of confirmation and turned around to leave. Chu Ning gave a few more orders to the remaining soldiers and then sat down on the ground. What can I do? Oh, I'm scared to death. Don't appear like this next time. People are scared to death, Chu Ning said angrily, bouncing up from the ground. Didn't I tell you to hide now? Why did you run out? If I had known you came out, I wouldn't have come out. Maybe I had already escaped to a safe place by now, Chu Ning said in a broken voice. I want to see if I can be of any help, Zhu Qijin said awkwardly after being snatched away by Chu Ning. All right, since you're out, then stay here and don't run around, otherwise even the immortals won't be able to save you, Chu Ning said angrily. However, he also knew why Zhang Fu looked at him with a surprised expression just now. Zhang Fu's ability to be so obedient was mostly indicated by Zhu Qijin behind him. At this moment, a soldier ran to Chu Ning's side and said, General, the battlefield is dangerous. I have found you a suit of armor. Well, not bad, what's your name? Chu Ning asked the soldier as he picked up his armor and prepared to put it on. Unlike in TV dramas, wearing armor is a discipline that requires someone to assist. Otherwise, not only can one not wear armor properly, but it may also harm oneself. Fortunately, the soldier had a keen eye and stood up to help Chu Ning wear armor. He didn't hesitate to say, I'm the scout Zhao Wu. Upon seeing the situation, Zhu Qijin also stepped forward to help. Anyway, he was also an emperor who had received military education. Although he had never served anyone else, he was always stronger than Chu Ning, a modern person. Soon, Chu Ning put on a suit of armor and looked much more heroic. However, this is also in the eyes of others, while Chu Ning himself is in endless pain, it is really too heavy. This soldier, in order to please Chu Ning, found a set of heavy armor somewhere. It looks very powerful, but for Chu Ning, it is too heavy. Chu Ning didn't know, it was a small soldier who took it off a cavalry general's body. Chu Ning felt like she was carrying a big mountain on her back, so overwhelmed that she couldn't speak. 
At this moment, Zhang Fu returned with a large group of people, and from a distance, he saw Zhu Qijin serving Chu Ning and Jiao. Zhang Fu also suffered from toothache. Although Zhu Qijin had to bear full responsibility for this failure, he was still the emperor of the Ming dynasty. How could he not be surprised to serve a commoner? Zhang Fu naturally chose to ignore it, but if Zhang Fu pretended not to see it, others would be different. The officials who followed him, including Chen Huai from Pingxiang, Shen Rong from Xiwu, Jing Yuan, the commander of the imperial consort, Chao Nai, the left attendant of the Ministry of Personnel and a scholar of the Hanlin Academy, Wang Gui, the governor, Yongha, the right attendant of the Ministry of Works, and Deng Li, the deputy governor of the right censorate, were not only surprised but also angry. The Grand Emperor of the Ming Dynasty was like a servant wearing armor, which uncle and aunt could not bear. Inspector Zhang Hong rushed to Zhuqi Town first and said, Bold thief, how dare you enslave your majesty? What crime should you commit? Chu Ning glanced sideways at Zhang Hong and turned to ask Zhu Qijin, Who is this? This is the censor Zhang Hong, Zhu Qijin said as he looked at Zhang Hong. Bold. How dare you confront the emperor? Pa. Before Zhang Hong could finish speaking, Chu Ning slapped him and turned Zhang Hong around twice. A clear palm print immediately appeared on his fair face. If you don't want to stay here, just roll away, or else close your bird's beak. Chu Ning shook her hand. The slap just now was a bit hard, causing a slight pain in her hand. Now everyone closed their mouths wisely. Firstly, Chu Ning was indeed a bit tough, which put a lot of psychological pressure on them. Secondly, Zhu Qijin did not show any discomfort, and they were not too good at showing it. Come here and let you search for weapons and provisions. Even if you bring some soldiers back, it's okay. What are you bringing back this kind of trash for? Chu Ning shouted at Zhang Fu. To everyone's surprise, Zhang Fu bent down and admitted his mistake, obediently behaving in a mess. These are all officials of the Ming dynasty, and it's not easy for them to fall into the hands of the Wara people. If they encounter them, I will take it upon myself to bring them back. Zhang Fu may seem to be bowing down, but in fact, it is his years of experience in the battlefield and court that have enabled him to make the most favorable choice. Since the emergence of Chu Ning and Zhu Qijin, Zhu Qijin has been obedient to Chu Ning like a follower, even personally serving him. If Chu Ning can escape danger this time, his future will be limitless. You too, just go on the expedition, what are you doing with these talkative trash? Chu Ning turned around and vented her anger on Zhu Qijin when she saw that Zhang Fugan was not taking action. After a nameless fire, Chu Ning said to everyone in front of him, Now everyone is a grasshopper on a rope, so I won't say much else. The situation in front of him doesn't allow for a second sound, so those who don't want to stay here can leave on their own. After listening, everyone closed their mouths, even Zhang Hong obediently closed his mouth. The civil and military ministers in front of me do not know that with the continuous development of Chu Ning, apart from Zhang Hong, others are known as the Eight Great Vitras under Chu Ning's command. Chapter 3 Triple Series You are listening at NovelFull.audio At this moment, Chu Ning would not have thought of this either. The first thing he had to face now was how to break through under the encirclement and suppression of the Vara army. If he had other travelers, such as special forces, with such skills, he would not hesitate to choose to escape, at most taking Zhu Qijin with him. But now he is just a powerless commoner, in this battlefield of countless armies and horses fighting, it is simply impossible to survive. So he chose to face everything directly, using Zhu Qijin's fox to feign tiger power. Not to mention, as a senior user of military websites in later generations, although his professional knowledge is not yet useful, there is still not much problem in dealing with the current situation, at least Chu Ning himself thinks so. Duke, that, sir, has already been excavated within a radius of five miles as you instructed. At this moment, Zhang Fu's personal soldiers also returned with their men to report. I had a habit of reporting to Zhang Fu, 
but was stopped by Zhang Fu's gaze. My personal reaction was also quick, so I quickly changed my mind. Well, how is the current situation of our people, horses, and food supply? Chu Ning asked without hesitation. Adding what was just gathered, there are now 5,300 people, and there are no shortage of knives and guns. However, there are very few bows and arrows, only a hundred or ten, with less than a thousand arrows and two hundred firearms. Zhang Fu replied. Map, who has a map of this area? Chu Ning asked. Everyone was in a daze. This can be considered as the hinterland of the Ming dynasty. When marching in one's own home, who would bring a map? Chu Ning also woke up at this moment and said awkwardly in secret. Sir, I come from a scout camp and I know some of the terrain nearby. Seeing no one respond, Zhao Wu hesitated and walked forward. Then tell me about the current situation. Chu Ning didn't expect that this soldier had a keen eye, not only resolving his embarrassment, but also providing detailed information. After Zhao Wu's explanation, the ditch in front of them was an unnamed small tributary of the Yanghe River, a tributary of the Sangan River. It was only a hundred or ten miles away from the later Guantang Reservoir and only over fifty miles away from the Yanghe River. However, Chu Ning did not choose to retreat on the ground with everyone's coaxing. Now they have more than five thousand people, only a few war horses, and in this plain area, they are almost the living targets of the Vala cavalry. Chu Ning drew a simple map on the ground and had Zhao Wu and others revise it. He lowered the map and began to think about countermeasures. The Vala cavalry arrived in an instant. On this plane, if we want to run, we will definitely not be able to run their cavalry. Therefore, I will establish a stronghold here, gather the soldiers, and as long as we hold on, there is hope. This is very dangerous, even a slight mistake can lead to death on the spot, so I won't force you all. I welcome those who stay, and I don't blame you for those who want to leave. I originally intended to give you time to consider, but now we don't have the conditions. Let's make a decision none of these people moved, and the reason they just escaped was not because they were incompetent, but because as soldiers or even generals, there was no one or system telling them what to do. Those who resist are simply instinctively reacting out of their professional habits. Now someone is standing up and telling them how to do it. They are all veterans of the Hundred Battles, and they know what to do, which is why Chu Ning is so bold. As a student majoring in history, he certainly knows that these soldiers today are not comparable to those of the Ming army in later generations. This is the true elite of the Ming dynasty. Quickly, a well-dot-designed and well-dot-defined defense line was formed. At the same time, Walla's pursuers have also assembled. Boyan restrained his warhorse and looked at the defensive line in front of him, frowning slightly. The Ming army on the entire battlefield now had no formed troops, and the temporary defensive line in front of him didn't seem like it was hastily built by a defeated army. However, in his view, this was just a stubborn resistance from a small group of Ming army troops. Boyan raised his whip and pointed, and a team of thousands of people emerged from the crowd, heading straight towards the Ming army's defense line. At this moment, everyone in the Ming army also raised their hearts to their throats. Hundreds of thousands of troops were unable to resist the Vara army. The temporary defense line built by these thousands of people, how long they could withstand it, is completely unknown. However, the soldiers were not very panicked, after all, there was an emperor behind them, the British duke who was the first general of the Ming dynasty, and many civil and military ministers, not to mention a mysterious expert. That's right, this expert is Chu Ning. Chu Ning didn't know that among these five thousand people, he had already become a savior like existence. Chu Ning's breathing was heavy. Firstly, he was nervous. Secondly, his armor was too heavy and his silk cord was tied too tightly. However, no matter what, if he wanted to survive, he couldn't lose the battle in front of him. Chu Ning was silently praying that his tactics could be effective. Quickly, a thousand cavalry from Vala began to charge towards the defense line, and Chu Ning became much more relaxed. 
he watched the Vala cavalry and calculated when to launch a counterattack. Zhu Qijin, who was originally very nervous beside him, miraculously calmed down when he saw Chu Ning. He weighed the steel knife in his hand, and his Longquan sword was now requisitioned by Chu Ning. He learned to look ahead like Chu Ning. At this moment, civil officials such as Chao Nai were also holding swords and knives in their hands, as if ready to charge at any time. However, his combat power was about zero, so they were very nervous, and their palms had already turned white with sweat. Zhang Fu was also very nervous. He didn't think about Chu Ning or those civil servants, but was a bit puzzled by Chu Ning's recent arrangements. After years of leading troops, he had heard of some similar arrangements, but he had never seen them before. Just as everyone was feeling extremely nervous, Chu Ning lifted his sword and swung it down fiercely, fire. Chu Ning's loud shout frightened everyone around him. Zhang Fu lowered his head in frustration, wondering why he had mistakenly believed in Chu Ning. The Wara cavalry is still two arrows away from the defense line, and with the accuracy and range of their firearms, they can also kill the Wara people who are charging at the forefront. Sure enough, with Chu Ning's command, the musketeers on the Ming army's defense line fired, and a thick smoke filled the front of the Ming army. Except for the top ten unlucky ones, the other thousand cavalry in Walla were completely unscathed. Boyan was even more convinced of his speculation upon seeing this, and watched with peace of mind as his tribe began to hunt. However, without making everyone wait too long, Chu Ning shouted again, launch. At this moment, except for Zhu Qijin and Zhang Fu who had been staying by Chu Ning's side, everyone else, including Chao Nai and other literary officials, looked at Chu Ning in surprise. Everyone knows that after a firearm is fired, the barrel needs to be cleaned, and gunpowder and iron sand need to be filled. How can it be fired continuously? However, the answer was soon revealed. With Chu Ning's command, the smoke from the Ming army's recent firing of firearms had not dissipated, and the roar of firearms echoed again in the smoke. This time, the killing power has significantly increased compared to before, with over 50 Vala cavalry being hit by cannons and more than 10 warhorses being shot and falling to the ground. The other Vala cavalry saw this and instinctively threw away their stirrups, hiding their bodies on the side of the warhorse to reduce the area of impact. Shoot! Just as everyone was confused, Chu Ning let out a loud shout again, and the sound of firing cannons echoed in front of the Ming army. Chapter 4 Victory in the First Battle You are listening at NovelFull.audio This time, the Ming army's musketeers obviously lowered their guns and specialized in shooting warhorses. Although not many Vala cavalry were killed, more than 100 warhorses were hit, after all, warhorses have a larger area than humans and are easier to shoot. At this point, the Vala cavalry was already very close to the Ming army's defense line, with only one arrow's throw. Even if the accuracy of the firearms was poor, it was still difficult to shoot them into the air in front of such a dense charging team. Shoot arrows. Chu Ning, as advertised, couldn't stop and shouted loudly again. Sure enough, amidst the smoke, a row of arrow rain flew towards the Vala cavalry. For combos. Zhang Fu shouted loudly. Zhang Fu looked at Chu Ning in surprise. He didn't understand how Chu Ning knew the secret tactics of the legendary Qianning King, and how he could combine the weapons at hand so perfectly. It was simply amazing. Continue. Chu Ning ordered again. At this time, the Ming army also saw their own achievements and was surprised by the magic of Chu Ning. The weapons were still those weapons, and the people were still those people. Chu Ning just rearranged the people and shot and killed more than 300,000 invading cavalry. Of course, there are also many Vala cavalry who were injured and fell off their horses, but falling off their horses during this cavalry charge is not as satisfying as being hit to death. Boyan was also surprised. It was also the first time he had seen this kind of warfare, and they were already familiar with the tactics of the three major camps of the Ming army before. That is Zhu Di's masterpiece. After discovering the Mongolian cavalry, 
the Shinji camp immediately approached the forefront of the formation and prepared for the firing of artillery and cannons under unified command. After the shooting of the Shinji camp is completed, they will immediately retreat to the two wings of the team, and then the cavalry of the 3000 Battalion and the 5th Army Battalion will immediately fill the empty spaces and launch a surprise attack on the Mongolian cavalry that has already been damaged. This seemingly simple tactic brought extreme panic to the Mongolian cavalry sweeping across the Eurasian continent. But as time went by, they also summarized some countermeasures, such as scattered charge, but this time it was different. The Ming army's shooting was as continuous as rainstorm. Even if dispersed, when both sides engage in battle, they must gather together, otherwise how can we fight? Boyan quickly sounded the horn upon seeing the situation. If the fight continued like this, the people under his command were not enough to be killed by the Ming army. You should know that although we have gathered over 100,000 troops this time, everyone is from different tribes. If the losses are too great, it will be the annexation of other tribes that will welcome him. Boyan quickly sounded the horn and summoned the troops. As the Vala cavalry retreated, the Ming army's positions were filled with deafening cheers. Many of them were ready to die in battle, but who could have imagined that after Chu Ning's deployment, the Vala cavalry retreated without even touching the front line, leaving behind more than 300 corpses. You go check the situation with the gunpowder and arrows, Chu Ning didn't forget about this small victory, but whispered to Zhang Fu beside her. At this moment, Zhang Fu was also immersed in the joy of repelling the enemy. Upon hearing Chu Ning's words, he quietly left. When he returned, he admired Chu Ning even more. Yeah, even though he's in his seventies now, he has been leading troops since Jingnan, but this is the first time he has encountered such a situation today. Chu Ning's ability to transform decay into magic in such an environment is simply a miracle bestowed by heaven. Sir, the firearm can still be fired ten times, and there are still seven hundred arrows left, Zhang Fu said respectfully. After hearing this, Chu Ning frowned and knew that he had fooled him this time. It was because the Walla people across from him didn't know his own background, but this was not a long dot term solution. The current situation is already difficult to get off. If you turn around and leave, it's no different from reminding the enemy on the opposite side, but the weapons in your hands are not enough to deal with the enemy's second attack. Fortunately, Chu Ning had prepared in advance, otherwise he would have had to order the army to break through. Well, I'm telling everyone to take a break and prepare the second step plan as soon as possible, Chu Ning instructed. At this point, everyone had already regarded Chu Ning as a life.saving straw, and the gods and men had descended from heaven, and they had unconditionally executed his words. Even the gunners and archers in front of the battle did not lose any weapons in their hands, feeling a bit panicked. They feel that these issues are not problems at all in front of Chu Ning. Without looking at the temporary organized troops, under the command of Chu Ning, relying solely on his scarce weapons, he repelled the fierce Vala cavalry, and the casualties on his side were almost negligible. If at the beginning, Chu Ning relied on Zhu Qijin's fox to feign tiger power, then after just one battle, everyone's confidence in Chu Ning has already exploded. Sure enough, after his tribe withdrew, Boyan thought carefully and felt that he had been reckless. First, they boldly deployed troops and withdrew when they saw a slight setback. Thinking about the Ming army on the other side, although they were well organized, they were ultimately composed of defeated troops, and there must not be much arrows and gunpowder available. As long as one's cavalry withstands the Ming army's three axes, victory will definitely belong to oneself. Leader, the person who withdrew said, I found a person wearing gold armor across from me. As soon as he said this, Boyan immediately understood. Among the Ming army, there was no second one who could wear or dared to wear golden armor, except for Emperor Zhu Qijin of the Ming dynasty. A surge of adrenaline rushed straight to my head, but it was still forcefully suppressed by Boyan. The more it is at this time, the more we cannot take it lightly. Boyan thought for a moment, carefully observed, and found that the formation of the Ming army on the opposite side was very organized. The Ming army stood at the forefront of a dry river ditch, 
making it difficult for their cavalry to launch a surprise attack from behind. But it's okay, it seems that the Ming army on the opposite side is not only a temporary infantry organization, but also only about 5,000 people. If we can't take down our own 7,000 cavalry, it would be too embarrassing for our ancestors. Furthermore, if the opponent is really the emperor of the Ming dynasty, capturing him on your own would be the greatest credit for this expedition. So Boyan did not send anyone to contact other tribes in the surrounding area, nor did he even notify his brother first. Order the front army to immediately launch an attack and defeat the opposing Ming army at all costs. Boyan said fiercely. With Boyan's command, 2,000 Vala cavalry once again charged towards the Ming army's position. Damn it, the reaction is quite fast. Chu Ning saw the Vala cavalry on the opposite side and charged again, cursing angrily. Zhu Qijin looked curiously at Chu Ning. It was the first time he had heard someone cursing in front of him. If it were someone else, Zhu Qijin would definitely feel unhappy. But if this person is Chu Ning, it's a different story. Others were full of admiration and dared to swear in front of the emperor, and this master was also the first one. Get ready. Chu Ning spat out the dry grass in her mouth and shouted loudly. With Chu Ning's readiness, the Ming army also began to prepare for the battle. Chapter 5 Turning the Tide You are listening at NovelFull.audio As before, when the Vala cavalry was two arrows away from the Ming army's position, the Ming army began to shoot. However, this time the Vala people also learned to be clever, and only a small number of cavalry were charging at the front, and the formation was still very scattered. This made the segmented shooting of the Ming army unable to achieve the almost crushing effect they had earlier. Indeed not a good enemy, Chu Ning couldn't help but sigh upon seeing the situation. What is a good enemy? Zhu Qijin asked with a puzzled expression on his face. Nonsense, of course it's a dead enemy. Chu Ning said angrily. Zhu Qijin didn't understand, but he didn't dare to continue questioning for fear of disturbing Chu Ning's command. After two rounds of simultaneous firing by the Ming army, the vanguard cavalry of Vala had already rushed to a one-arrow mark, and the Ming army had achieved only a meager 20.30 cavalry, which was the result of the Ming army lowering their guns and hitting their horses. At this moment, the Ming army at the forefront saw the situation and did not continue shooting, but turned around and ran towards the rear. Huh, as expected, they don't have much gunpowder and arrows. The whole army launched an attack, capturing the Ming Emperor alive, rewarding a hundred horses, a thousand cattle and sheep, and sealing a thousand households. Boyan was overjoyed at the sight of this and shouted with blood. After listening, the remaining five thousand cavalry soldiers, as if they had been beaten with chicken blood, rode their horses with red eyes and wanted the Ming army to charge forward. Soon, the front line of the Ming army had returned to the main formation of the Chinese army, and they had once again set up their positions as if they were going to make a final resistance. Vala's cavalry looked at the Ming army, no longer at the enemies holding knives and guns, but at the fat cattle, sheep, and horses. The open riverbank in front of them was not a problem at all. But just as the Vala cavalry rushed to the three arrows in front of the Ming army, a sudden accident occurred. For some reason, the horses fell to the ground, and the knights on the horses were caught off guard and thrown off. Boyan had already rushed forward at this moment and had no time to judge what was happening ahead. If it were the stumbling rope and trap set by the Ming army, wouldn't it have appeared on such a large scale? Boyan quickly grabbed the reins and prepared to order to stop the attack. At this moment, a feather arrow flew over, and Boyan quickly turned sideways, narrowly avoiding a disaster. However, the messenger following him was not so lucky and was shot by an arrow. Boyan turned around to look, only to see an old general with white beard and hair, who was regretfully putting away his bow and arrow, turning around and galloping towards the Ming army's position. With such a delay, Boyan not only failed to issue the order to stop the attack in time, but also caused the only messenger around him to die in battle, leaving only his own personal guards around. 
Upon seeing this, Boyan had no choice but to instruct his personal guards to loudly convey his order to withdraw his troops. But now those Vala cavalry are already red-eyed and have no intention of caring about the orders from the guards. However, even if they hear them, they are not prepared to stop. Or rather, it couldn't stop at all. The two thousand vanguards who were charging at the front had already reached less than an arrow in front of the Ming army, and the subsequent cavalry were not far apart. They are cavalry, and at such a distance, dealing with those infantry is almost effortless. Their minds are now filled with Boyan's promise just now. Boyan felt a hint of unease upon seeing this. But now it's too late to think about anything, because Vala's team has already rushed into the trap circle of the Ming army. The small pits that Chu Ning had instructed people to dig before were now seen by the Ming army as the magic weapon of victory, while in the eyes of the Wara people, they became a deadly steel sword. Although these small pits are not large, as long as the horse's hooves step on a little, even if they only step on the edge, the entire hoof will sink in. The consequence is a missed opportunity. If it were a big pit, it would be impossible to escape the eyes of the Wara people and avoid those obstacles. For the Wara people who have grown up on horseback since childhood, it is simply a child's play. But this kind of small pit is different, because it is small, it is difficult to detect unless it is a slow marching infantry. As the Vala cavalry fell to the ground on a large scale, the artillery and archers on the Ming side no longer felt sorry for their weapons. Firearms and bows rained down on the Vala cavalry like raindrops. The Ming army in the rear is also eager to try and ready to attack at any time. Charge! Chu Ning shouted loudly. The Ming army on the defensive line rushed towards the Vara army like a fierce tiger. The Ming army's frustration and helplessness during this period finally found a vent. Why are you rushing up at such an old age? Stay here to protect the emperor. Chu Ning grabbed Zhang Fu, who was carrying his sword forward. Zhang Fu was somewhat disappointed. He was a veteran on the battlefield and had been thinking about wrapping his body in a horse's clothing. However, this expedition was a bit suffocating, and he was already prepared to die in battle. However, he is still very rational. Chu Ning is right. If everyone rushes forward in one go, what will the emperor do? Zhang Fu had to surround Zhu Qijin with over a thousand people. At this moment, the Ming army rushed to the front of the Vala cavalry, waving their swords and guns. This was not a battle, it was simply a one-dot sided massacre. Just like in battle, cavalry has a natural advantage over infantry in terms of speed, but now, most of the Vala cavalry have fallen off their horses, still falling off high-dot-speed running horses. Those Vala cavalry, if they were lucky enough not to die or be injured in a fall, now they are all meat and vegetables, with no resistance at all. Even if no one had fallen off their warhorses, the battlefield was already filled with fallen people and horses, and they could not fully utilize their speed advantage. They could not even withdraw. Such a good opportunity, of course, the Ming army will not miss it. The Ming army rushed forward and reaped the lives of those Wara soldiers. Boyan stood in the distance, watching his own people being slaughtered by the Ming army, feeling extremely uncomfortable. But he can't think of any other way now, he can only make people sound the horn and recall the remaining cavalry. In fact, even if Boyan didn't give orders, those Wara soldiers who had not yet rushed into the trap wouldn't rush over. They couldn't figure out what kind of magic the Ming army was using on the opposite side, causing the soldiers in front to fall one after another. The battle quickly ended, and the atmosphere on the side of the Ming army reached its peak in an instant. Yes, under the blind command of Wang Zhen these days, the elite of the Ming dynasty have been wandering around like headless flies, with loopholes everywhere. Those generals either make promises to Wang Zhen or simply remain silent. Chu Ning is different. Although his attitude towards the emperor and courtiers is extremely harsh, he is completely kind to ordinary soldiers. However, the most important thing is that Chu Ning can lead them to victory. And courtiers like Zhu Qijin and Zhang Fu understood that at such times, whether right or wrong, 
only one voice was needed. Chu Ning looked at the morale boosting in front of him and finally let go of the heart that had been hanging in his mind. Don't be idle, quickly clean up the battlefield and transfer. Dot. Except for Zhu Qijin, others instinctively looked at Zhang Fu, and Zhang Fu had to grit his head and approach, Sir, where are we going? Nonsense, stay here and wait for destruction. Quickly find a place that is easy to defend but difficult to attack, and raise a big flag to collect people. Chu Ning said with a resentful tone. Yes, I'll arrange it now. Chapter 6 Pre-War you are listening at NovelFull.audio. It's not that Zhang Fu is confused, but rather that Zhang Fu, as one of the courtiers present, has the highest rank and second only to Zhu Qijin in terms of discourse power. Zhu Qijin has now become a small fan of Chu Ning, and Zhang Fu can only come out to inquire, so that everyone can have a clear understanding. Zhang Fu certainly knows why to transfer as soon as possible, and he already has a destination. At the beginning of the chaotic battle, he discovered a place, but at that time the morale of the army was already in turmoil, and he could only be helpless. Chu Ning entrusted this matter to Zhang Fu, and he also had this mindset. Of course, he knew about Zhang Fu's military capabilities. Quickly, under the organization of Chu Ning, the Ming army cleaned up the battlefield. Chu Ning not only collected weapons, provisions, and war horses, but also did not let go of those dead war horses. Sir, these war horses have already been injured. Although they can all be cured, now that we lack sufficient medical treatment, no one can cure us. Let's just forget about the horses, Zhu Qijin asked curiously. What do you know? We don't know how long we'll be staying here, how many more people will gather here. These war horses are our food. Don't talk so much nonsense. Look at Zhang Fu, he's not like you. There's so much nonsense. After listening, Zhu Qijin nodded and didn't say anything more, but his gaze towards Chu Ning became even more respectful. Soon, under the leadership of Zhang Fu, they arrived at a hill where there was a considerable forest, indicating that there should be a source of water. Sure enough, when the army arrived at the mountain, they consciously began to cut down trees and transport stones, set up camps and defensive fortifications. According to Chu Ning's suggestion, the camp occupied one. Fifth of this hill, enough to accommodate two to three thousand people. After the camp was built, Chu Ning arranged for people to slaughter the heavily injured warhorses and turn them into smoked meat, while the rest were kept in captivity. At the same time, arrange for people to go down the mountain to continue collecting supplies, but remind everyone to pay attention to safety and not to make meaningless sacrifices for a little material. Finally, have someone raise a big flag at the highest point. As time passed, people came to the camp from time to time. Fortunately, these individuals were responsible for accommodating and resettling, and those sent out to collect supplies also returned one after another. At the same time, they also brought back many people. In the evening, Chu Ning had just had a delicious meal of horse meat and was walking around when he saw Zhang Fu hurriedly approaching. Sir, something big has happened. Chu Ning trembled upon hearing this, but still forced herself to remain calm and asked, Don't worry, speak slowly. Sir, the camp has already gathered and resettled 20,000 people. Zhang Fu said excitedly. After listening, Chu Ning almost rushed forward to strangle him. At this moment, in the middle army camp, Boyan was crying to his elder brother that his 7,000 tribes had lost over 4,000 in World War I, and he only brought back 3,000 people. All right, now there's only that complete Ming army left on the battlefield. Tomorrow, I'll dispatch 10,000 troops to destroy that Ming army. Unexpectedly, at this moment, my own younger brother was defeated. Moreover, he suffered such a devastating defeat. For the sake of his younger brother's face and his own authority, he decided to increase his manpower and eliminate the Ming army. Moreover, according to Boyan, Zhu Qijin seemed to be there. Now on the entire battlefield, everyone is busy collecting prisoners and seizing the supplies left by the Ming army. If one goes there personally, 
their own tribe may suffer significant losses. And if someone else were to be sent, if Zhu Qijin were really there, wouldn't this huge credit be a benefit to others? Grand Tutor, I believe that Boyan's recent departure was unfavorable. If his military strength were only inferior to that of the Ming army, he would not have suffered such a devastating defeat. Moreover, even Boyan's tribe has not figured out why he was defeated so far. It is even rumored that the Ming emperor was blessed by Chang Shengshen, which would greatly damage the morale of the military. It is better for me to lead someone to test it first a man with a face full of flesh stood up in the big tent and said. First of all, seeing the situation, my eyebrows couldn't help but furrow. This person is not someone else, but his biggest rival, Allah. This person relies on the strength of his subordinates and has never been able to deal with him. He always believes that his ability is no less than that of Yi Xian, but he is subordinate to his banner. Therefore, he always opposes him everywhere and dares not go personally this time, precisely to guard against this person. Just as he was about to speak, Boyan spoke on the side and said, what Ziyuan said is extremely accurate. Boyan knew that his ability was not as good as Ziyuan's 101. If Ziyuan can go so far, he must be able to go without any mistakes. Boyan spoke up first. Okay, since that's the case, Allah Ziyuan will take people to eliminate that Ming army tomorrow. Although he didn't understand why Boyan said that, out of his understanding of his younger brother, he finalized this matter as soon as possible. After listening to it, Allah felt a sense of being deceived, but now that he had spoken up, as a tribal magistrate, he still had to listen to what he had said. Besides, this time he had volunteered. Although he felt a bit uncomfortable in his heart, Allah thought it over and realized that the 200,000 strong army of the Ming dynasty had been defeated, leaving only a few thousand people. There was nothing else that could cause a big wave. Thinking of this, Allah also arched his hand first, using the excuse of preparing for tomorrow's war, and turned around to leave. The other people in the big tent saw that they had no other orders and stood up and left one after another. What do you mean? Seeing that there were no other people in the big tent, he quickly asked Boyan. My elder brother is somewhat unaware that although this Ming army was defeated on the battlefield, its tactics were very different from those of the previous Ming army. Afterwards, I carefully examined the battlefield and did not find any abnormalities. But the soldiers of my tribe did indeed fall off their horses suddenly. According to the soldiers who escaped, the war horses were like being possessed by evil, and suddenly fell. Moreover, prior to this, the new tactics adopted by the Ming army were completely different from the past. Their firearms were able to fire continuously, probably three times. Coupled with bows and arrows, my cavalry was unable to approach their defense line after listening, he furrowed his brow unconsciously and said, Someone, take Zhang Jun. Chu Ning was unaware of what had happened in the large tent, but before retreating, he had already made arrangements by arranging personnel to restore all the small pits. As for the Wara soldiers on the battlefield, Chu Ning was not the one to care about. Now Chu Ning's situation is no better than before. With the passage of time, the originally spacious camp has already accommodated 20,000 people, which completely exceeded Chu Ning's expectations. With so many people gathered in one place, if it weren't for the assistance of Zhang Fu and others, Chu Ning would have been exposed long ago. Fortunately, at this moment, Chu Ning was already in everyone's hearts, as if he had already existed like a god. Zhang Fu and others dare not bother him with these small matters. Sir, do you have time now? At this moment, Zhu Qijin appeared cautiously outside Chu Ning's tent, like a child who had been wronged. Chapter 7 Me and you are different. You are listening at Novel Full Dot Audio. What's up? Chu Ning pretended to be deep and asked. Chu Ning is now in a bit of a dilemma. After all, from the beginning, Zhu Qijin had already revealed his identity to him. However, at that time, the two of them relied on each other and were busy running for their lives. Later on, it was a life and death battle, so he never had much goodwill towards Zhu Qijin. 
The situation has stabilized now, and many officials have come to the camp one after another. If we continue to behave like before, it will definitely cause dissatisfaction among the ministers and even cause military instability. Well, me, no, I was just wondering if you could give me a surname, sir, Zhu Qijin said cautiously. Chu Ning. Thank you, sir. After listening, Zhu Qijin ran away happily like a child who had received candy, leaving Chu Ning sitting in a messy tent. Does your name have any special meaning? He flipped through all the history of the Ming dynasty in his memory, including unofficial history, and did not find any prophecies related to his name. Your Majesty, did you ask? Chu Ning didn't know, and outside his tent, a large group of people were eagerly waiting for Zhu Qijin. Humph, that's for sure. Based on our relationship, if it weren't for the circumstances at the time, the gentleman would have informed us earlier. The gentleman's surname is Chu, and he has a single character of Ning. What a great name! Although there are three households in Chu, the downfall of Qin will inevitably lead to Chu. Peace and harmony, sir's appearance is to help us establish a peaceful and stable Ming dynasty. Zhu Qijin explained with a serious tone. May I ask your majesty, where is the gentleman from? Governor Wang Gui spoke up and asked. Um, I haven't had a chance to ask this yet, Zhu Qijin said awkwardly. Everyone felt a wave of disappointment. Chu Ning was unaware of what had happened outside the door. If she had known, it would have been another outbreak. When is it now, still entangled in these details? But for Zhu Qijin's officials, Chu Ning's name is too important. As soon as he appeared, he rescued Zhu Qijin, who was preparing to be captured and even in the midst of the collapse of the army, he used his own strength to turn the tide. With just 5,000 infantry, he defeated the elite 7,000 army of Walla. If Chu Ning is a spy of Walla, no one will believe it. After all, at this time, as long as Zhu Qijin is arrested, regardless of his status in Walla, waiting for him will be an unimaginable reward. Being a spy, joking, in case of being discovered, it will be the result of having a different head. No one present would doubt this. Wang Gui, as an accomplice of the royal guards, although he was clearly one of the commanders of the five army commander's office, he also supervised the tasks of the royal guards. So he was very interested in Chu Ning's background, because as long as he confirmed Chu Ning's innocence and returned to the capital, Chu Ning's career was simply limitless. Selling a favor to Chu Ning now may seem like inquiring about Chu Ning's background, but in reality, it is to eliminate hidden dangers for Chu Ning in the future. However, Zhu Qijin hesitated outside Chu Ning's tent for a while and ultimately only received one name, which greatly disappointed the long dot awaited crowd. What kind of expressions are you looking at? If you have the ability, you can ask for it yourself. Usually, Everyone says they want to relieve your father's worries, but when something happens, they still want me to personally take action. Zhu Qijin also knew that his handling of this matter was extremely imperfect. However, he was indeed very afraid of Chu Ning, which was accumulated by the two of them running for their lives all the way. Chu Ning knew his identity from the beginning, but he never treated him like an emperor, shouting at him and resorting to verbal violence. This makes Zhu Qijin, who has been pampered since childhood, feel like he has returned to his childhood. Everyone is here, I happen to have something to talk to you about. Just then, Chu Ning walked out of the tent. Mr. Chu, do you have any instructions? Zhu Qijin instantly transformed into a small attendant and ran to Chu Ning with a bumpy butt. The other ministers were also speechless, especially the later officials who didn't know who Chu Ning was and why the emperor was so respectful to him. However, looking at Zhang Fu and others, they all followed in and quickly walked into the big tent. I just thought about it. Tomorrow, Walla will definitely send someone to attack us. What do you have in mind? Chu Ning asked. Our army's defense line has been built, and after a day of collection, we now have 3,000 firearms, 1,500 bows and arrows, and a large number of gunpowder arrows in our camp, enough to repel the invading enemy. 
Zhang Fu is now serving as an automated rear guard. No way. Chu Ning interrupted Zhang Fu's words, what does it mean to have enough response? Are you thinking about how to defend now? After Chu Ning finished speaking, there was a moment of silence in the big tent, and everyone looked at each other, not knowing what Chu Ning meant. It's already a stroke of luck to be able to maintain this camp now. Do we still have to take the initiative to attack Walla? More than 200,000 soldiers have been beaten up like this, and now there are only 20,000 people in total. They have firearms, bows and arrows, and there are hardly any cavalry. If they go out, what is the difference between going out and dying? What do you mean, sir? Zhang Fu boldly asked. It's not very interesting, I just want to know your thoughts. It seems that you've been scared out of your wits by the Wara people, Chu Ning said disappointedly. Sir, where did you say this? I missed the Ming dynasty, since the founding of Emperor Taizu. All right, why talk about that history? Are you thinking of inviting Emperor Taizu out of the imperial tomb, or are you thinking of the resurrection of King Zhongshan? It's useless to just say something. Chu Ning looked resentful. Does this gentleman have any promising ideas, said the minister of war, Kuang Yi. This old man followed the soldiers who were collecting supplies to the camp. At first, Kuang Yi had a good impression of Chu Ning. After all, he was able to turn the tide and build such a large camp to gather the remaining soldiers and stabilize people's hearts during the downfall. He could be considered a savior. However, Chu Ning's words just now deeply hurt him. 200,000 elite members of the Ming dynasty were defeated by Vala, and it was a stroke of luck to be able to stand firm and wait for reinforcements. Unexpectedly, Chu Ning not only showed a disdainful expression, but also showed no respect for the emperor. I didn't see Zhu Qijin following behind Chu Ning like a follower, but Chu Ning was still able to sit on the big tent. It was simply extreme rebellion. Who is this person? Chu Ning turned around and asked Zhu Qijin. Minister of War Kuang Yi, Zhu Qijin replied honestly. Who should I be? It turned out to be Kuang Shangshu. Of course I do. As soon as these words came out, everyone in the big tent looked at Chu Ning. Except for Zhang Fu and a few others, the others who came from behind looked at Chu Ning with an idiot-like gaze. If it's just standing by and waiting for reinforcements, or if it's standing by and waiting for changes, of course our strength is not a problem now. It's not that I'm talking big. Even if we bring the Vara army first, there's nothing I can do. However, war is not as you imagine. If that's the case, the blood and courage accumulated by the three generations of the Ming dynasty will be defeated by you, the black sheep. So, don't think of me like you do, I'm different from you. Chapter 8 Arrogance and Arrogance You are listening at NovelFull.audio This translator is experiencing an error, please try another translator. Chapter 9 The Emperor's Flattery You are listening at NovelFull.audio This start is quite good, at least there is a little fan named Zhu Qijin. According to historical records, Zhu Qijin is also considered the longevity emperor of the Ming dynasty. It seems that I still have plenty of time to plan for the future. Of course they won't come now. They'll have at least half a day to shift the blame and argue, so hurry up and rest. At this age, your health is still the top priority, Chu Ning said to Zhang Fu with concern. Mr. Xie's concern will eventually hold on. Report Fifty miles away, we found a battalion of Vala cavalry heading straight towards my camp. At this moment, a messenger ran to the big tent to report. Well, it came quite quickly. Chu Ning finished the horse meat soup in his hand with a few swipes, picked up his sword, and stood up straight to the camp gate. Zhu Qijin and Zhang Fu quickly followed out upon seeing the situation. Chu Ning arrived at the watchtower at the gate of the camp and looked up from afar. To the north of the camp, a gust of smoke and dust swept in like a wind. Sure enough, ready. 
With Chu Ning's command, the soldiers in the camp began to get busy. Quickly, two cannons were pushed to the entrance of the camp and placed in the designated location. At this point, some people were puzzled as to how the cannons were placed in this area. Could it be said that Wallah's cavalry could still charge halfway up the mountain? However, this is not the time to get entangled in these things. The entire camp is in a tense state of preparation. People are like this. At the beginning, due to Wang Zhen's chaotic fate, the morale of the army was scattered, and the Battle of Tupu completely reduced the army to lambs waiting to be slaughtered. Now someone has brought them hope of victory, and they are full of confidence in this battle. At least not like before, being driven and slaughtered like a lamb. At this moment, Vala's cavalry also arrived at the foot of the hill. Allah looked at the large camp arranged at the mountaintop position and didn't feel like he had curled his lips. Here it is called a hill, but in fact, it is a few hundred or ten meter high hills, which are the remnants of Guantane Mountain. The terrain is not dangerous, and even somewhat flat. Cavalry can even charge up without dismounting. There is no other way for Zhang Fu to choose this place. Firstly, it is the highest point nearby. Secondly, the undulating terrain here can partially alleviate the impact of cavalry. Thirdly, it has abundant water resources. These are not the key points, the key is whether they can withstand the attack of the Vala cavalry. Chu Ning looked at the Vala army at the foot of the mountain and no longer had the same fear as yesterday. After yesterday's battle, Chu Ning had also grown quite a bit. After the assembly of the Wala army at the foot of the mountain, with the command of Allah, 500 cavalry soldiers rushed out in a loose formation towards the Ming army camp on the mountain. Chu Ning has been keeping an eye on the movements of the Vara army. Seeing the enemy's charge, he knows that the person in front of him is a tricky enemy. He did not launch a large dot scale concentrated charge like Boyan did, but instead dispatched a small force to launch a tentative attack. Allah thought so, with 500 cavalry scattered so far, if the Ming army were to shoot on a large scale, it would be difficult to cause large dot scale casualties, and he could still see the Ming army's tactics. If these 500 people could put pressure on the Ming army's defense line, then he would command the army to take advantage of the situation and cover up. Although Allah did not reconcile for a while, he has still been on the battlefield for a long time. Although he does not know the reason for Boyan's failure yesterday, he still made the best offensive plan. If it is true as Boyan said, the Ming Emperor is here. As long as he defeats this Ming army, there is a hope of capturing the Ming Emperor alive. At that time, he will be a hero who revitalizes the glory of Mongolia, and he will have enough capital to compete first. Sure enough, the Ming army on the hill began to hesitate, watching the sparse and sparse Vala soldiers without firing arrows. Not even the artillery was fired. This indicates that the other party is very wary of their own probing. In fact, Allah only guessed a part of it correctly. As the elite of the Ming army, these soldiers were not yet panicked by the opponent's probing. They were waiting, waiting for Chu Ning's order. Quickly, the Vala cavalry rushed up the mountain slope, although their speed was affected by the terrain and slowed down, the impact was not significant. However, as they approached the Ming army's main camp, the 500 Vala cavalry began to unconsciously approach the camp gate. The construction of the Ming army camp was very standardized. If infantry were to attack from the foot of the mountain, the best way would be to break through the gate and drive straight in. Because although this was a temporary camp, the Ming army made full use of the mountain terrain, and the main camp was not traditional square or circular, but built according to the trend of the hills. This will be the best route to enter the camp, constrained at the camp gate. When there was still two arrows away from the entrance of the camp, these Vala cavalry attached their bodies to the back or side of the horse, trying to minimize the impact area. At the same time, they drew their bows and arrows and prepared to fire them at the Ming army on the camp gate. At this moment, Chu Ning shouted loudly, Let's start. The Vala cavalry thought that the Ming army was going to shoot arrows or firearms, but they didn't expect that the Ming army on the camp wall had changed much. 
If they could observe from a high altitude, they would find hundreds of strong men behind the camp gate, struggling to pull thick ropes. 1, 2, 3, apply force. With neat shouts, long pits ran through the camp gates in front of the Vala cavalry. No matter how careful these Wara soldiers were, they wouldn't have thought that the Ming army was so cunning that they dug so many pits in front of the camp gate. These long pits are not deep, only half a person deep and not wide, only the width of a horse. With just a lift of the reins, war horses can easily cross them, but they are extremely numerous. And the spacing is also very particular. If the warhorse crosses the first long pit, it is difficult to avoid falling into the second long pit after landing. Even if it barely crosses the second long pit, it is impossible to cross it in any case, following closely behind the third long pit. Sure enough, with the appearance of the long pit, even if a few of the 500 Vala cavalry could hold their horses, most of them still did not stop and had to increase their horse speed to the highest, hoping to cross this row of long pits. But reality tells them that according to scientific calculations, except for a very few lucky people, others cannot escape. The Vala cavalry fell off their horses one after another, either with people falling off their backs or with war horses falling into long pits. Quickly, there were only over a hundred remaining from the five hundred cavalry, who turned around and retreated. Allah saw clearly from the foot of the mountain. While he was grateful that he had only sent five hundred soldiers, he also cursed the cunning of the Ming army. Before the battle began, he had lost more than three hundred people. The Vala cavalry who fell into the long pit was surprised to find that there was also a small surprise inside, which was some sharpened branches irregularly inserted inside. After falling into it, both humans and horses could not escape being pierced. And the Ming army in the camp seemed to have no intention of leaving the camp to repair their swords, allowing the people and horses in the long pit to howl and howl. Sir, you're talented. With just a few long pitfalls, the Wara people were forced to retreat. Zhu Qijin shamelessly flattered Chu Ning. However, Zhu Qijin's words still received recognition from the majority of Ming army soldiers. This is not to say how outstanding Chu Ning's strategy was, but in this confrontation, the Ming army did not suffer any injuries, not even firing a bow or arrow, and achieved a record of beheading 300 people, greatly enhancing the morale of the Ming army. Don't be too happy too early, the big picture is now. Chapter 10 Pre-War Preparation You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chu Ning did not become complacent due to Zhu Qijin's flattery. He knew that this loss was not even superficial for the current Walla people, and the real war had not yet begun. Now he has established an unshakable authority in Zhu Qijin's heart, and has also established a high reputation among these Ming armies. Everything is developing in a good direction. As long as we can successfully pass this hurdle, whether it's showcasing our skills in the Ming dynasty or setting sail, it will be a powerful asset in the future. But the prerequisite for everything is to successfully pass the level. Thinking of this, Chu Ning felt a hint of nervousness for no reason. These long pits can only bring some confusion to the Wara army's attack, but ultimately they are not a long-term solution. Sure enough, the Vala cavalry at the foot of the mountain quickly made adjustments. I saw a change in the formation of the Vara army, and a large group of ragged people from behind were driven to the front of the army. Seeing these people, the Ming army in the camp instantly became angry and reported. Although those people were dressed in rags and had empty eyes, it could be seen that they were all Han people. It should be the Wara people who captured large Ming army prisoners, or ordinary civilians who plundered along the way. These people are almost all young people, which is not to say how kind the Wara people are. On the contrary, seeing these young people, it is not difficult to imagine the fate of those old and weak. Sir, what do they mean? Zhu Qijin asked curiously. Get lost. Chu Ning shouted angrily. Zhu Qijin saw that Chu Ning was really angry, so he had to regretfully step aside, pull Zhang Fu over, and continue asking. Your Majesty, the Wara people are going to use these Han people to fill the pit. 
Zhang Fu explained to Zhu Qijin in a low voice. After listening, Zhu Qijin also understood why Chu Ning was so angry. Although the contact time was not long, Zhu Qijin could still feel Chu Ning's respect for life. Seeing his fellow countrymen being used as cannon fodder, Chu Ning must have been extremely upset at this moment. Zhu Qijin wisely did not continue to inquire, but silently came behind Chu Ning and continued to play the role of a follower. Those later ministers, upon seeing this, not only felt indignant towards Chu Ning for being unreasonable, but now their understanding of him has been elevated to a higher level. The emperor was so unreasonable by Chu Ning that he didn't feel any displeasure, and even continued to appear behind Chu Ning. This is exactly the result that Zhu Qijin wants. Although Zhu Qijin's reign as emperor is not very good, he is still someone who has been emperor for eight years and has a good grasp of people's hearts. He did this because, firstly, his false words angered Chu Ning, and secondly, he wanted to give everyone a feeling that Chu Ning's words were a decree. Only in this way can we achieve what Chu Ning called unity of all. Mr. Chu, should we bury the long pit and rescue the people? Chen Huai, the Pingxiang uncle in charge of the excavation of the long pit, advanced and said. Well, it's possible. Wait a minute. Seeing that Chu Ning agreed to Chen Huai's suggestion, Li Zhen, another Xiangqing uncle who was involved in the construction of Chang'an, spoke up and blocked the way. At this moment, by filling the long pit, the Wara cavalry can rush to the front of the camp without any obstruction, and there must be a mix of Wara people among those people. We will face the attack of the Wara army directly then. Li Zhen finished, and many people nodded. However, Li Zhen's words didn't seem to have any effect. Chen Huai didn't even glance at him, so he walked down the camp wall and ordered to go. Li Zhen was momentarily taken aback, and then understood that with Zhu Qijin serving as the regent for Chu Ning, every word Chu Ning said now could be seen as an emperor's order. Even if her words were reasonable, they would be of no use. It's not that Li Zhen is cold-blooded and ruthless, but as he said, this is a conspiracy, even a conspiracy, of the Wara people. No matter what they do, the ultimate result is the same. Unless Chu Ning orders that all those people be shot, the Wara people will not be harmed at all. Quickly, the Ming army activated the mechanism, and the first long pit was buried. Just as the second long pit was gradually buried, the captured army arrived at the front long pit and began to transport stones, plants, and trees for burial. As you can see, among the crowd, there are many Wara people holding swords and knives, constantly urging the prisoners to accelerate their progress. The Ming army above the camp wall was now filled with extreme indignation. They all looked at Chu Ning, hoping that Chu Ning would give them a chance to go out and kill. But Chu Ning remained expressionless as she watched everything happening in front of the camp. At this moment, Chu Ning constantly reminded herself in her heart to remain calm, this is war. Quickly, all three long pits were filled in, and the prisoners, driven by the Wara people, continued to walk towards the camp wall. They were like walking corpses, with no vitality in their eyes. Just as the captured army arrived at the gate of the camp, Someone suddenly noticed the Ming army above the camp and began to run towards it, shouting incessantly, Help me. I am Han. Before he could run far, a feather arrow flew out from behind and shot him to the ground. Before he could completely breathe out, he used his last bit of strength to shout, Help me, and crawled towards the camp. The Ming army on the camp wall couldn't help but shed tears. Such a scene makes them have the intention to kill enemies, but no opportunity to do so. Chu Ning knew that this was a challenge, and if not handled well, the prestige he had easily established would collapse instantly. Chu Ning silently walked down the camp wall and arrived at the gate of the camp. I want three thousand people to come with me to rescue those compatriots. Who would like to go? With Chu Ning's loud shout, the entire campsite heard a deafening roar, I'm willing. Sir, let me go. We can't do without you here. At this moment, Shen Rong, who had been silent among the ministers, walked closer. Children, come with me. 
After speaking, Shen Rong drew his sword from his waist, opened the camp door, and rushed out. Three thousand people were promised, but five thousand rushed out. Chu Ning quickly ran up to the camp wall and shouted at the bottom, Han people all lie down. When Chu Ning shouted, many people reacted and shouted along. The Han prisoners in front of the camp also began to lie on the ground one by one. At this moment, Shen Rong also rushed towards the nearby area, and among the Walla people mixed in the crowd, few could understand Chinese. The vast majority of them were still holding swords to drive away the Han people who were lying down. Shen Rong led a 5,000 strong army to kill, and he was the first to use his sword to knock down a Vala soldier who was preparing to kill the Han people. Upon seeing this, the Vala soldiers no longer entangled with the prisoners, but instead wielded their swords and attacked Shen Rong's side. The soldiers from both sides quickly became entangled, and the Ming army also began to organize those prisoners to rush towards the camp. There were not many Wara soldiers among the prisoners, but the ground was full of lying prisoners. The Ming army was greatly restricted in their movements, while Wara did not need to worry about those prisoners. Both sides unexpectedly fought a close match at once. The crowd above the camp wall looked nervous, because not far behind the captured army were the cavalry of the Walla Brigade. 